Hey guys, what's going on? This is Zach with Deeply Driven Outdoors. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a ditty pole. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, if you don't know what a ditty pole is, people call them different things. Some people call them bank lines, some people call them, I've heard them called bush hooks, limb lines. Depends how you run them, where you're from. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a piece of PVC with some hard braided line and a hook attached to it that you pound into the bank, bait it with what well, we like to use live bait, but you could use cut bait too. Bait that up and wait for a catfish to come by, come check it later, you should pull the catfish. These ones are actually made by my friend Justin. He's with uh, Muddy River Outdoors. He makes his own ditty poles. He has a few extra bells and whistles to him and he does a pretty good job. So we like to support him and, and uh, use his poles. But we did used to make our own and they work just fine. We caught a uh, 45 pound flathead on them, 48 pound flathead on the ones we made. So today I'm gonna to run through how to make a ditty pole so that you can go and run them as the weather warms up. I know right now it's February. I'm, uh, I'm looking at my, my boat over on the other side of the barn with the, boat, with the duck line still on it. And uh, I'm looking forward to taking that off, getting on the river and, uh, and putting some poles in the, in the bank to catch some fish. So if you're wanting to get ready for that right now, I'm gonna show you how to make them. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's a lot of fun to do. All right, so uh, make, again, making these ditty poles are pretty, it's pretty simple and it's pretty inexpensive too. Um, all I'm gonna use, I got a 10 foot stick of, this is three quarter inch PVC. So uh, you need three quarter inch PVC. And again, this is the thing where you gotta look up your state regulations. So in Iowa, we can only run five sets. There's a lot of places that I've heard from, from viewers down south that they can run way more than that. Um, we were just actually in Missouri last year and uh, ran some poles too. I think they can have 25 if I remember right. So long story short, check your state regulations, see how many uh, sets you can run. So like I said, state of Iowa where I'm at, it's just five sets. So we get, uh, do five sticks of PVC. Uh, I'm obviously just gonna be making one today for demonstration purposes. So one stick of three quarter inch PVC. I use an eye bolt. It doesn't really matter what size, and some guys don't do, the, do it this way. Um, what I'm going to do with the eye bolt, and I'll show you this here later too, is I'm going to put the eye bolt through the piece of PVC, and I'm going to tie the line onto the eye bolt. It's going to do a couple of things. One, if you draw, I drill a hole through here, uh, and you have a very large fish on, it creates a little bit sharper edge that the fish is going to pull the line against, and it could fray or, or tear the line up. Uh, secondly, well, bait this with a circle hook and you can kind of put the hook in there and it doesn't stay in like perfectly but it kind of stays in so it makes a sort of a little a little bit of a hook keeper for you the other thing you need is the line so um with this line this is what i like to use is catahoula tarred braid um you can get twisted line but again like when you cut it it's gonna be more liable to fray so you don't want it to fray, uh, obviously. Um, the number, I think it's number 18 line is what they call it. It's like, it's about nine bucks for, I think it's like 243 feet. I just looked it up. Um, but I think it's like the number 18 line. It's 0 0.058 inch diameter. That doesn't super duper matter. I think there's like, that's got like 168 pound breaking strength. So there's not probably a catfish in the United States that's gonna break that line. Either way, you don't want to go too big because you got to consider the uh, the eye on the hook. You don't want it to, you know, not fit through the hook eye. So, anyway, that's what I recommend. I think they said I think this line is like nine bucks. I'll leave a link. I don't have any, you know, affiliate sponsors or anything like that, but I'll leave a link just so you can check it out if you're shopping for supplies. It's pretty cheap. It's like nine bucks for the whole spool. Um, you can pick it up at like Walmart or Bass Pro, but I don't know that it's as good of a line. Uh, but you know, look what your local store has too, if, if you know that they, they carry it there. So, all right, so the tools that you're gonna need, uh, I've got Sawzall, which you don't have to have a saw, if you don't have a Sawzall, it's not a big deal. It's just 10 foot for a ditty pole is a little too long. I'm gonna cut them down to eight feet. Um, if you need, I mean, you can just use, as long as you've got like a hand saw with a fine tooth uh, edge on it, that'll work just fine. Um, I'm gonna use a Sawzall because and it's a little faster, so it doesn't really matter, but whichever one you got, have that available. Uh, have a drill with a bit to drill a pilot hole for uh, the eye bolt. Again, the eye bolt's kind of optional. 
that's just how we used to do them, and, and it worked all right doing it that way. So uh, it, the drill is just for drilling the pilot hole for the eye bolt, and uh, that's about it. So I'm going to use a table vise. You, can, you don't have to use a table vise if you don't want to. You don't have one available, but I'm going to use a table vise to hold, you know, just hold the PVC so I can cut it. Um, but like I said, you certainly don't have to do that. I got the, the PVC in the table vise. I'm going to measure out two feet. That's the thing I think I forgot to say. A second ago is tape measure. Uh, I'm just going to measure two feet off this uh, piece of PVC and cut it off. Again, 10 foot is kind of long. Like if you're in a boat you know, and you're smacking your buddy in the face with it, um, it's just a little gaudy. We used to do them five foot because the sticks came in, in, in 10 foot sticks. That's a bit short. Um, but you could do it. Again, it's not super, super specific. People do them all kinds of different ways. You can do them seven feet. There's guys that'll leave them 10 foot. Um, but for, for my preferences today, we're going to cut them down to eight feet. This right here is my two foot line. I'm going to go ahead and just cut that off. I'm going to try to cut it at a 45 degree angle. And the reason I like to do that is when you go to pound these poles into the bank, they're going to stick in just a little bit better. I got, uh, got this cut at a 45 degree angle so that, you know, we can go ahead and just slam it into the bank just a little bit better. Um, some guys will put like a block in here or like a, a, a dowel rod, something like that, in the end of this PVC to keep it from getting blocked up with mud. But I don't, for this style of diddy pole, I don't see that as being super important, but that's a thing that you can do if you like. Next, I'm going to come down to the other end here. And I'm just going to measure. It doesn't, again, it doesn't really matter. So I can just eyeball. But I'm going to measure, if you were to do them all the same, um, you know, just a few inches down from the top here, um, about two inches. I'm going to drill that pilot hole. And that's going to be for the eye bolt. I'm just going to measure out, uh, yeah, I would say about two and a half inches from the top. And make my pilot hole. So for this eye bolt, I'm just going to kind of line up, you know, drill bit to the eye bolt. Uh, we're going to go with 5 16 drill bit. Look at that. Fits right in there. Okay. So we got that on there. Um, you could actually use, I'm just using the, the nut that came with the, the eye bolt, but you could get uh, a lock nut, which would probably be better. But again, this is mostly for demonstration purposes. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you use a lock nut, that's what I would use if I was going to like, again, I use those muddy river poles. So if I was going to use this pole a whole bunch, that's what I would use. But for the most part, this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to wrench that on there as hard as I can. Just finger tight anyhow. OK, so I've got the eye bolt now on the ditty pole. And I'm going to cut the line and adhere that. So as you may have gathered from this video, the amount of line that you need to use is also an approximation. It doesn't really matter, but I like to go with as, about as much line as the length of the pole. So eight to 10 feet, um, you know, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball measure it out. You know, I'm going to put it, put it up to one end and kind of string out some line. Okay. So I think I got about eight feet. I'm going to add a little extra. If I went with nine on this pole, that'd be just fine because I'm going to have to have a little extra for tying, tying knots and stuff. So the reason, like, you don't really have to go with a whole lot of line. Uh, if you're running ditty poles, obviously you're pounding these into the bank. So it's not usually ultra deep right off of the bank. Although sometimes you can get some pretty deep spots. However, most of your, your bite is going to be at night. So catfish will come up to the surface to feed uh, a lot more during, during night. So you're kind of catching those fish that are closer to the surface, uh, you know, in, in the evening. Uh, you can definitely catch fish during the day. And that's where, you know, you can let more line out. But there's a lot of guys that they'll run their ditty poles and they'll put a live bait on the hook and they'll have it splashing right at the surface and get that surface uh, disturbance going. We'll usually sink ours down a little bit further, but um, again, that's that's preference, you know, all on whatever you're used to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tie this. I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm just tying this braided line on here. 
Um, I'm kind of a knot dummy, so I have one knot that works, and it's basically some modified version of the uni knot, and that's what I use for just about everything other than a loop knot, which I'll use for like, you know, making the drops for the digi pole and stuff. But yeah, I mean, really, as long as you got a knot that you like that's not gonna go anywhere, tie that. Cut off the little tag end here. And now, you've pretty much got a diddy pole. Um, you know, this is kind of the thinner, this must, this is kind of a thinner uh, braid, which I would, I would recommend going with, because again, you gotta fit the line through the eye of a hook still. And hook eyes are generally made for, uh, you know, having fishing line going through them. So I have had it where I bought line too big and couldn't get it through the eye of the hook. So uh, to avoid that, said even the, even the, the smaller diameter stuff is gonna hold a monster catfish. Come down to the other end of the line here. The way we used to do this, we used to just go up the line a little bit. Well, first we'd put the egg sinker on. Put the egg sinker on the line. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot of weight. You're just kind of trying to keep the fish under the surface and, you know, weight it down from wrapping itself on roots or whatever. You don't have to use weight either. You can definitely do it weightless. Uh, and then we'd kind of come up here, just tie a knot in the line kind of higher up. Keep the egg sinker from bashing into the hook. And then this is probably a four or five aught hook. We will use all the way up to 10 aught hooks, especially if we're going, you know, bigger bait for flathead. But um, you can definitely, I mean, like I said, you can fish jitty poles with cut bait if you want. And for channel cats, like some applications, it's nicer to downsize your stuff. I'm actually going to make uh, some diddy pole drops, which I'll talk to, which I'll talk about in a second. For you know, fishing large creeks and small rivers, you know, mainly targeting small channel cats. Um, I'm going to hopefully be able to do that this year, but we will see. So anyway, I'm going to get this uh, hook tied on here quick. And just using my basic old modified uni knot. So basically that that could be a finished ditty pole. And you know, to stow it, you just kind of twist the line around the ditty pole. Like so. It's a little bit tedious, but you know, it's not too bad. That's another reason you want to go and put like 30 feet of line on it. Most of the catfish that you're fishing for when you are fishing with diddy pole are pretty close to the bank. They're, they're using that bank, that uh, bank line structure. So then, you know, go up here, you got your eye bolt, that's your circle hook. You can kind of just drop the circle hook in there. Again, that's not gonna like keep it ultra, ultra steady in there, but it'll stay in there through some, through some rattling around. Uh, so it's kind of a hook keeper, but also the smoother edge of the eye bolt uh, helps keep the line from wearing. So that could be all you need to do. You put your, your name and address on there, or again, check your state regulations on tagging. Uh, always check your state regulations on any kind of fishing. Uh, but on tagging these, usually what we'll do, we'll just take Sharpie and write like name and address on here. And that's copacetic, but some states may require a different kind of tagging. So. Just make sure you're doing that, and uh, and that's all you got to do to have a have a functional ditty pole. I will show you about drops, ditty pole drops right now, which we started using a few years ago. It makes it a little more versatile. All right, so I just cut the hook and the sinker off of the ditty pole, and I will show you what we'll do for drops here. Give myself a little bit of line. I'm just going to tie a loop knot. I'm going to take double over line, double it around two fingers push it back under and through itself like so and you know, get a loop knot there you go I don't know people call this different things I call it a dropper loop maybe it's called something different but that's just a loop knot um, and you can put you can actually do it either way it doesn't matter again theme of the video is user preference but you can put a swivel 
like a large, a very large barrel swivel on the end of your ditty pole. Uh, or you could put the swivel on your drop. But again, use your preference. So I'll show you a drop here real quick. So this is a drop that we use. So it's probably, I'm going to guess like a six aught hook on it, eight aught hook on it, two ounce bank sinker, and large swivel. So that drop size is only a foot and a half. It wouldn't even necessarily have to be that big. But then if you got your loop in the ditty pole like this, all you got to do is, you know, you take your loop, you put it through the barrel swivel. Right, then all the way through. You bring the rest of your rig up, drop it back through that loop that you made in your main line, and pull your tackle through. You pull your hook, leader, and bank sinker through. Snug that up on the barrel swivel, and you're fishing. And then when you're done, it's so easy to take off. You're just you're just letting the slack out on that loop, and you're pulling everything back through the end of that loop. So it's really easy to take on, take off. That way you don't have to have your tackle on the pole the whole time. Plus you can swap out depending on the situation. If you want to go with uh, a drop with no weight on it, you can do that. If you want to go with a little four out hook because you want to fish cut bait in a big creek, you can do that. Uh, if you want to go with a 10 out, 12 out hook, whatever you want to do for monster fish, you can do that. It adds a lot more versatility uh, if you can add drops. So that's what we like to do. It's a little more work, but it's not really too bad. You can use the same, as far as the line on the drops, you can use the same uh, stuff that you use on the main line, the Catahoula Tard Braid uh, number 18, if you want. So I said that's what we use. Um, but yeah, that's that's about the that's about the extent of it. So. Pretty easy, pretty inexpensive. I mean, your most expensive thing you're buying on the, on the pole is probably the dang, if you get good hooks or something like that. But all in all, it's pretty cheap. So anyway, I got a whole bunch of Diddy Pole videos coming up. Feel free to go back, look at all my Diddy Pole videos from the past. We got some big fish on camera. I'm looking forward to uh, running Diddy Poles a bunch more this year too. So hit that subscribe button, drop me a comment. Let me know what you call these things. You call them bank poles, call them Diddy Poles, bush hooks, limb lines. Hopefully, it's something that I have not heard of before. I'll learn something new. So drop me a comment, hit the like button, subscribe, all that stuff. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.